What's up, guys? It's RJ with Road to Liberty. Hashtag try homeless. Also, uh, CEO of Future Media Management, futuremediamgmt.com. Guys, I am on the road again. Today is day five of my journey of trying to find out what it's like to be homeless and to uh, expose homelessness as a possible alternative lifestyle for people who maybe are fed up with the, uh, the control system of the state or you know being on the grid or just the high cost of, of paying rent or paying for a mortgage or just paying for utilities and all the you know regular costs that come with day-to-day -day living in America uh, or anywhere in the world. So uh, where am I at? I'm still in Abascon today. Um, today I'm coming to you from a new video shoot location behind a billboard. Um, I have a view of Atlantic City right now. Um, there's a pickup crew, of uh, a trash pickup crew and all that that's just finishing up their work on the side of the highway here. I was a little concerned that they might uh, actually see me and try to uh, punish me or remove me from, from the spot. It's kind of comfortable here. I did a good deal of walking, maybe about a mile or so, mile and a half, to try to find a new place to shoot a video today for you guys. Um, so let me give you a view of what we're looking at. Uh, why am I so bad at doing this? You gotta keep it parallel to the ground, dog. Okay, there we go. It's like reverse of what you think it would be. There we go. So, totally in the confines of a billboard thing. Uh, let me show you the street and where they're working over there. So I go back and watch these things obviously after the fact and uh, I was a little worried about the clarity but usually it's actually pretty decent you guys can usually can see the background and the uh, foreground and everything okay enough uh, if you look below here in Jersey when you're not in grass and you're close to the coast you're in the swamp so there is some swamp action taking place around here decent amount of bees decent amount of bugs um, but not nothing crazy that's it's still a good time of year I guess for it um, so let's see let's remove let's recap guys uh, today's day five it's been a, pa a tough past couple of days for me uh, due to the weather. We've had low temperatures going down as low as the 40 you know, degree mark pretty much over overnight with some intermixed rain and drizzles. So it's been sort of uh, stressful for me at times to try to stay warm. Um, I did get a, um, I don't know exactly what it's made of, but it's like this metallic type of sheet that comes real folded up into a, a little tiny, you know, package that you can get from uh, Rite Aid or Walmart or you know, any of the you know, pharmacy type stores. I think I paid two or three or four bucks maybe, five bucks at the most. And it came with two. Uh, two, they're called blankets. So I kept one in my bag uh, all folded up for if I'm traveling somewhere and I hit an you know, unexpected rainstorm, I can kind of like take immediate shelter in place uh, by just crouching down and putting this thing over my head. Um, past two nights when I slept, I had laid on my mattress, which I have a video that whether it's out now or not, by the time you see this, I don't know, but uh, that's going up soon as well where, where my bed is. Um, but my mattress in the woods, <laughs> um, it's here, imagine the mattress, and then I'm laying on the mattress, then I have my wool uh, blanket that I got from the thrift store recently, and then on top of that, I layer the metallic blanket. So literally, last night, I'm under this metallic blanket, almost like a tent, on top of the mattress, and then I had the wool blanket over me, so I'm, you know, warm from the wool. But if I were to take the metallic blanket over my head for, you know, five or ten seconds, the cold air of outside and the rain, not that it was raining hard, but just the light drizzle and the water dropping from the trees, falling on my face and falling next to me was enough to keep me from wanting to, you know, feel comfortable to sleep and feel good. So um, putting this kind of like metallic tarp over me helped me stay warm and stay dry. Um, and I'd hear little drops coming down on the on the metallic, and it was like ding, 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 whatever. And um, that was kind of reassuring. It was like a, a little mental gratification of knowing that I figured out a way to be warm. And I, you know, I, I haven't talked to a lot of the homeless people or really any of them too much yet. Um, I don't know if they've w welcomed me so much into their group, um, but that would be a good tip to share. That you know, you get these metallic blankets, and that's like shelter right there wherever you are. So. Um, another thing that's been tough the past few days is the um, discomfort I felt in my feet um, from ex you know excessive walking. I don't think that that's something that's just you know a homeless thing. I think that if, if anybody walks as much as I've been walking recently and they're not used to it, they might have some foot pain. So part of it's my feet getting used to it. Part of it is taking a break and not going so hard every day on walking and you know posting up and like I am posting up in Abascon for a day or two or three. 
um, who knows how long, um, but you know, to not constantly, constantly walk everywhere. I might look into getting a bike or um, you know, even a skateboard or, or something as an alternative means of transportation as well. Um, bah, 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 bah. I found it useful to um, take some time every day to take off my shoes and socks and give myself a little foot massage as well. Um, keeps your feet from getting overly achy and I think just exposing your feet to fresh air keeps you know rashes and stuff. I've, I've got some bumps kind of forming around my like lower ankle area like the skin around where, where my socks were. Um, I'm not going to show them. It's not nothing gr grotesque or anything but I think it's just a, like a rash sort of thing from wearing two layers of socks for two days straight and only taking them off once a day and not showering either. So um, so, you know, some of the some of the uh, challenges of not having a home are starting to set in for me for sure. But you know, I'm, I'm I feel good. I feel like I can handle it. I feel like I'm going to keep uh, working on whatever challenges are thrown my way and try to get around everything. Um, on the topic of feet, um, there is a night or day difference between the way you feel when you have a one or two day old pair of socks on your feet versus how you feel when you have fresh socks. Um, yesterday, I went to the dollar store and got. Um, you know, um, I'm going to get into that in a second, but I got a good deal on socks and when I put the fresh socks on, I felt great and it was almost immediately that I, I realized that the socks were really a big part of what was responsible for my mood. So yeah, at the dollar store, I was able to get two pairs of white, like generic men's socks um, from one of the dollar stores in Abscon, Abseekin, whatever. Um, that pretty much almost competes with the cost of doing laundry. If you think about it, you get two pairs for a dollar. You know how much does it cost you to do laundry on ten or twenty pairs of, of, of laundry? It's, it's five dollars a load, you know, plus drying them. And then your socks get worn and worn and worn. You might as well go buy two new pairs for a dollar every time you want to wear socks. <laughs> you know, if you can get that kind of deal. I also got a five ounce bag of roasted salted sunflower seeds for a dollar. I'm able to get one or two or three of those a day, depending on my appetite, which is nice. Um, the only time you really get sunflower seeds. Uh, without the shell, that's just a ro roasted, salted um, kind. At that kind of a rate, um, you know, usually you're you're buying about a pound at a time. So to be able to buy five ounces at a time and get them for a dollar each allows me to cho really choose my portion size and how much I want to carry with me. Um, geez, this is gonna be a long episode, guys. Sorry, uh, I'm not sorry, but maybe you like that. <laughs> um, so going through my notes here, some tricks that I figured out on the road. Um, when it's raining and you're traveling, keep a shopping bag with you, like in your backpack or in your back pocket, one of the like ShopRite or grocery store shopping bags, um, whatever, Kroger, whatever you have, and put it over your head and tie it off like, um, like a belly shirt or a do-rag kind of thing where it's tight to your head. And, you know, believe it or not, it actually immediately will warm your head up because all the heat escapes from your head usually and your feet. So that'll immediately warm your head up at least a little bit. And then the fact that your head's not going to get wet, um, even if your clothes get wet, when you get to wherever you're going, whether it's a McDonald's or a train station or somewhere you're going to go to try to be warm, to take that, you know, makeshift do rag off, kind of, and and have a dry head, I think is something that <laughs> doesn't cost you anything to grab one of those bags. Um, they're floating around everywhere. You don't need to pay for that as a homeless person. So that's a, that's a hat for free, basically. Um, what else? Look for hideouts. Um, so like this billboard spot that I'm in right now, uh, the train track spot I was at the other day, um, anything in the woods, clearings, you know, anything that you can find that's that's not on the beaten path of other people where you can just sneak away and have your own space for a few minutes, that's a little replacement house, you know, for you in a sense. It's a, it's a type of a home that isn't a home, obviously, but it gives you the ability to, you know, uh, get some alone time to, you know, to have your own space, to feel, you know, kind of situated where no one's going to disturb you or especially with the noise too. I mean, most of the places you're going to be as a homeless person, if you're watching this or if you're curious is, um, you know, near highways, near roadways, near public places, you know, cause you're, you're constantly trying to find shelter in, you know, stores and restaurants and stuff like that. So you're not going to be off too far away from civilization too much. But to find a little place behind a Home Depot or behind a billboard or in the woods a few hundred feet um, can be a huge mental psyche, um, I think, helper for someone who, who's, you know, looking for that solitude, but not the noise and, and you know, the constant scrutiny of being watched 
and being judged perhaps if you look like a hobo if you look homeless you might be you know getting judged so hideouts is uh, the second bit of uh, tricks and advice I have for you guys today um, I've gotten some feedback from friends people are saying I'm doing a great job saying thank you um, some people said I'm entertaining or inspiring them um, that's awesome that's the kind of stuff I'm sh certainly going for um, thank you for the positive support guys thank you for the feedback uh, and your kind sentiments it means a lot to me it helps me feel like I want to you know keep doing this and you know, realize that maybe I've been taking the easy route and sort of being afraid of, of taking real risk in my life and maybe this is what I need to do to, to sort of get out there in the world and find myself completely, offer the most value completely and get people to be aware of me and what I'm trying to do so I can find friends, partners, allies, investors, audiences and all that to try to really build my future of what I want to do which is just give back to the world and, and create content and create value through uh, online businesses, online projects, uh, mostly content related um, to help niche audiences that need help with different topics or different information that's not they're not being served. Um, in this case, people who are curious about homelessness as a lifestyle lifestyle alternative or people who are homeless who are looking for ways to get a different perspective. Um, so um, thanks for the feedback. People are saying they're watching every video, uh, which is a huge encouragement. That's fueling me on to continue my quest without taking a hotel or without taking a couch for as long as possible. I don't know how interesting I would be if it wasn't in the context of the fact that I'm doing this as a homeless person, but I'm not usually homeless. So I'm trying to keep that going. Um, some people have requested that I go over the supplies that I'm using, um, you know, like show all my what's in my bag and how I make everything work. Um, that's a great idea, and I think I will do that um, at some point. Maybe not today, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. Um, trying to keep the daily updates thing going and. Uh, Every day it's harder and harder to stay under 10 minutes. I'm already at 12 now. Um, generally, my supply strategy is probably not that well advanced either. Um, it would probably make for a good video to show where I'm at now and what, what's working for me and what's not, and then for you guys to be able to track it and see over time, you know, what other equipment or supplies I take with me that might um, be better. Um, another people have um, some other people have expressed concern about how this affects me as a business person or as an entrepreneur. You know, I mean, how this might affect my clients viewing me, you know, as a person offering offering a service. Well, what you know, what's what's it to say about your company that I'm paying you guys X amount a month or X amount whatever an hour to do the sort of type of work, whatever, to find out that you, you're not even investing in office space or even a home for yourself. Maybe I don't want to invest in this company to, to you know provide my services. Certainly a risk I'm taking. Um, I told that person that I really wasn't after a ton of clients for my future media side of the business. I'm really trying to take on projects that I think are exciting and that can be long-term valuable from an equity standpoint or for a partnership standpoint. Um, I will take on, you know, consulting gigs for as low as, you know, a few hours for, you know, 20 bucks an hour, depending on the type of work, up to, you know, um, you know, monthly contracts for 500 or 750 or 1,000 a month or up, you know, to do different types of work. Um, but it really has to be the right project and I have to, you know, vet these people and make sure that it's it's going to work for both sides. Um, so not too concerned about that. I'm willing to take that risk of how this affects me as an entrepreneur. I think I'm going to gain more from it and free up more of my time to work on sites and work on, you know, these advertising websites that are going to make me money. Um, if you guys want to check out a few of the sites I'm talking about, I own uh, the following websites. ProPokerTips.info, uh, RatchetDrinkingGames.com, uh, OvernightChickMagnet.com, um, EpicSkyscrapers.com, um, obviously Roads to Liberty, YarnGunnaKnit.com. So that's like five or six niche sites right there. Um, Polarized Sunglasses.Reviews. Those are all websites that I'm building out right now as a homeless person. I don't think a lot of the homeless people are building seven websites, but. Um, that's what is going to hopefully monetize me to be able to travel with a little bit better degree of comfort going forward. I'd love to have the same kind of uh, level of interest from the audience and to be able to in uh, interest you guys with valuable content, um, maybe on business topics or on self-help growth topics without having to be in the context of homelessness when I have more money. Um, you know, even if I'm living at hotels or beautiful resorts or a mansion, you know, I'd love to keep doing this. But I think to, for you guys to meet me, as the internet meeting R.J. Parker, no, he's that guy that that was, you know, could have could have crashed in his parents' house, you know, again, but decided to just be homeless instead, and that's yeah, that's part of who I am. So, um, gosh, it's gonna be a long video. Oh, whatever, we're shooting for 20 minutes today. 
Um, some people have requested more explanation or clarity on why I'm doing this and what I hope to get out of it. Uh, some of the why uh, basically is to learn, learn about myself, learn about the world, learn about society, learn about reality, you know, survival, to give myself a change of pace. Um, sometimes you can appreciate the good things in life, you know, having a shower, having a roof over your head, having a fireplace to sit down in front of, having, um, you know, a piano to play indoors or have, you know, a, a quiet room with a vocal booth where you can record audio, you know. Those are luxuries and, and you know to really get a taste of that I think this homeless experience has, has given me that um, perspective so I love that change of, change of pace um, I'm trying to inspire other people to leave their comfort zone to say you know look you don't have to look perfect on the camera you don't have to be pretty all the time you don't have to have the best audio quality your hair can be sticking up and falling down and whatever and maybe someone's interested maybe this is still valuable content for somebody and maybe you know you can let the audience decide you can let the numbers on youtube and let everything else decide if if it's going to be valuable for people and if it's something that um you know people are gonna be appreciative of so that's that on that tip um inspiring others uh i want to change the paradigm about homelessness if i can i want to show homelessness for some being a choice rather than um a forced reality you know some people probably think about going homeless and say Oh God, I don't want it to, you know, come to that. I don't want to let people know that I'm homeless. Da, da, da. Maybe I'm going to hopefully set, you know, a path for some people and say, you know what? I saw this guy online, he, you know, tried homeless. I'm going to do it for a week too. I'm going to try homeless. And, you know, I think if a thousand people tried homeless for a week across the world, this could catch on and really shake up how, you know, everything costs like, like hotels and rent and how you have to put, you know, I think what's ridiculous is no matter where you go, you want to live somewhere nice, you have to give them usually a month and a half plus first month. So you're talking about if your month's a thousand a month, you're giving them uh, $2,500 to move in. Plus you got to buy furniture. Plus you got to set up your utilities, and then you got to sign a one-year lease. So you're ponying up four G's usually, something like that, three, four grand up front, <coughs> and then you're locking yourself into a year commitment to stay in one place just to get a nice roof over your head. I think that we need to, as people, begin to create leverage by saying to the housing providing entities whether it be state or free market that we want a better deal we want month-to-month -month options we want weekly options we want nightly options we want pay-as-you-go options we want flex pay pay options we want a different uh, w way of getting uh, shelter so I think I'm gonna start to create um, you know a little bit of a path in the woods a clearing for, for this sort of thought um, so change the paradigm about homelessness, show it as a choice for some and not always as an indicator of poor ability or hampered, hampered mental uh, faculty. Um, also, I want to save money, hopefully build a passive income. I talked about my websites. They're all making a penny or two a day <laughs> off of ads or whatever, but some of them make a dollar here and there and you know, it's it could all grow. That's what I think. Um, I want to grow my personal brand and create more awareness for myself as a business person, as an entrepreneur, as a liber liberty advocate, and as a human being. So, you know, the name R.J. Parker probably means something to some people, but it probably doesn't mean something to everybody. There's a uh, science fiction author out there who goes by the same name as me. Um, he's in his 40s or 50s. I'm in my early 30s, so um, I think I have enough time in my life left to really outrank this guy SEO-wise, so with your support. Um, tweet me and all that stuff <laughs> um, alright so I'm finally at the end of my notes um, I just have a pretty lengthy wrap up session here to go through this is why I don't take notes um, no but at least I know what I'm talking about this time and I'm not just rambling as much um, so I'm looking forward guys to the next few days of good weather I'm supposed to have here um, we're off to a great start here trying not to drop my computer in the swamp <laughs> and give you guys a, a decent view of, you know again there's AC off in the distance over there um, you know, it's, it's a lot prettier if you were here, but at least you guys can see the sun and, you know, the fact that I'm not, you know, sitting at the library or sitting at McDonald's parking lot. So I'm looking forward to the weather, guys. Um, I'm waiting on a few clients to make payments on projects that I'm working on so I can have some more funds to uh, entertain the idea of going west. Um, I was thinking about taking a longer and a more expensive route across the country um, and try to really see the middle more, more d deeply, but... Um, there's a lot of really open areas in the middle of the country that I don't want to get stuck in, you know, where I don't have a ride or I'm dropped in the middle of nowhere. So I'm thinking about sort of fast forwarding to the fun part and, you know, trying to fly to L.A. and backpack my way up the uh, California coast, check out, you know, L.A., check out um, San, uh, San Francisco if I can, check out, you know, everything on the, on the Cali coast, check out 
Northern California, check out Redwoods, check out Humboldt County, um, check out Oregon, Washington State. So that might be really exciting to do that during good weather. I think I might fast forward to that. Um, need some money though. So um, on that note, I'm going to let you guys know that starting soon, I'm going to be opening up this project for some donations. I gave it some good thought. I wasn't going to do it in the first week unless I was going to stick to this past the first week. So now we're on uh, day five. You might see this day six, day seven. So perfect timing for me to uh, let everyone know. Keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to make an announcement, but we're going to be putting up a donations page that's going to have different ways for you guys to contribute if you want to, PayPal or Bitcoin, <coughs> um, maybe altcoins too. I don't know. We'll see what the demand is for that. I don't even want you guys to give me a ton of money, a dollar at a time, two dollars at a time, five bucks every week, every month, once. Great. You know, look, I don't even, if I got a ton of money from this, like over a thousand or something, like a ton of money, I would probably donate whatever I didn't need back to um, some charitable liberty cause or something, you know, that I think could be positive or, you know, put it to some use in, in a good way. Um, so by all means, uh, you know, uh, if anybody wants to contribute a larger amount, I'd rather you just message me privately and we could discuss um a project together or discuss um, sort of like a grant type of situation where you know if some organization wanted to help fund this project and put their name on it a little bit uh, that would be a sponsorship grant kind of situation where we could talk about that and uh, that would be an option as well but I wouldn't want that going through private channels or through the public donation channels I'd rather go through private channels talk to me personally um, we'll work this out if it's something anybody's interested in um, so the donation thing will be up soon um, Boppity boppity bop. See what else we got here. Um, that's about it, guys. I'm going to keep track of your feedback, your comments, your suggestions. I'm going to do what I can to make this valuable for you guys. Um, and that's about it. It's definitely the longest video we've had so far. Um, don't know what else is going to happen for me today. I have some videos to upload and edit. I have some client work to do, and that promise of going to the beach is still seeming like a dream. Um, maybe once I get paid on some client work, I might take a cab down to the beach in AC, because that might be faster, um, and eat the 20 or 30 bucks. Um, I don't know. I kind of like my little home where I have it, which, I'll, which you guys uh, will be able to see in the other video I, I've done about uh, that. Um, it's weird, it's like I'm homeless, but I have a little home that I really only go to at night, but that little spot where my mattress is, um, that's sort of, uh, it's like the universe gave that to me, it's like I attracted it, and uh, I'm not going to stay there forever, obviously, but it's hard to leave, it's like another home that I have to leave again, <laughs> but once I leave that, um, I won't have the mattress every night, I'll have the tarp and the blanket maybe, but um, I'm in no hurry to figure that out, I might actually leave and make my move right to, to the west coast, so. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. Um, check out the website. Check out some of the other articles going back in the archives. Um, there's a lot of good writing on RoadsToLiberty.com. And I appreciate you guys leaving some comments and letting me know what you want to see more of. All right? Thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for the feedback, guys. I love you. Peace.